Hey guys, it's Hugh Wayne Hancock here and welcome to the second episode in my podcast series. Now in this podcast session, I'm talking with Temple Grandin. Temple is one of the most famous people in the field of animal welfare. In fact, HBO made a movie about her life. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll put the link to the trailer in the description box if you're interested. And you'll find examples of vegans who have protested talks given by Temple Grandin. But you'll also find examples of vegans praising Temple Grandin. And she was given an award by the animal rights organization PETA. I observed that one of the major focuses in Temple's career has been to develop methods for killing animals, and she works directly with the meat industry, which makes me feel uneasy. But on the other hand, if you were to make a list of all the people in the world who have done the most to reduce farmed animal suffering, Temple's name would probably rank quite highly on that list. Now there is certainly a part of me that at times feels like she's being too much of an apologist for the meat industry. But at the same time, I'm very glad that she's a strong force for improving animal welfare and that she's helped so many people care about the well-being of animals. In this very imperfect world we live in, I think Temple Grandin has been a big force for good and I'm very grateful that she took the time to speak with me. If you could take a couple of sentences to simply summarize the work you've been doing up to this point in your life. Well, I wanna find practical ways on the ground to improve things. I'm not a theoretical person. I'm a visual thinker. When I talk about stuff, I see it. So your motivation to reduce the suffering of farmed animals is something that I've really related to. It's something, it's one of the main reasons why I wanted to talk to you. And even um, watching the, the HBO movie that they made about your life, yeah. uh, there were moments in that film where it was quite emotional for me to watch because I'm seeing how you're, you're empathizing with these animals and you're empathizing with the suffering when people around you, I suppose, are kind of indifferent to the suffering of these animals. What did you think about the movie about your life? I thought they did a very good job on uh, showing how I think visually. They showed all my projects. I really liked that. Mm. Um, because the other reason for being interested in the movie is I'm seeing too many kids getting an autism label and they're just getting addicted to video games going nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I want to show them that you really can go somewhere. And I had to work very hard because when I started out in the 70s, I was a lady in a man's industry. That was a gigantic barrier, mm -hmm. much bigger than autism. I had to make myself really good at design. And I started out and I thought I could like, fix the whole world with design back in the 70s. What I found is I can design equipment and put it in a, in a place. It only fixes half the problems. The other half is the management and management caring about doing stuff right. I'm actually trained in the neurosciences and you look at brains. I've, I've dissected, I've had a chance to dissect a human brain and I've dissected various animal brains. And where the emotions are, that's across all the mammals, it's about the same. The big difference between human beings and the other animals is the size of the cortex. We've got a computer sitting up here, vastly superior to the animals. So I think we have the same emotions, but, I, but since you've got a big computer here to filter it through, humans might go write a sad poem when they're grieving. Mm -hmm. Dog's not gonna do that. Right. But it, when it's got separation distress is and grieving are basically the same thing. I see. So, so you're saying that the, the raw feels of, a, of sadness, uh, pain, we share these in common with, with other oh, animals. Yeah. yeah, we share in, with animals. That's right. Now, I, I want to, to move on to, to what happens to the animals once they're in a slaughterhouse. And we know that most animals in the develop, developed world, at least, go through a process of stunning where they're rendered unconscious. That's right. Um, but this isn't this hasn't always been the case. Do you know when this started happening? The the stunning when the stunning was implemented. Well, in the U.S., it was uh, uh, in the '50s when they passed the Humane Slaughter Act. They used to just hang pigs up alive uh, uh, in the '50s in the U.S. Uh, you know, it's something that's uh, relatively uh, recent. So I saw a video about slaughtering of horses in Canada. And in the video, you say, I'm sick and tired of going to a plant and I don't care what species it is. Everything is working fine when I'm there. And then as soon as I'm away, somebody gets in with a video camera and all sorts of bad stuff is going on in there. I get really, really angry about that. Yeah, I do. I do. And uh, one of the things that's helped to reduce that is about 10 years ago, um, uh, they started putting video cameras in the plants audited by auditors in a mission control outside the plant on a random basis. That's helped a lot. Now mm. people get 
clever about knowing exactly where the camera view is. Mm -hmm. I, I remember one time looking at it, somebody was prodding an animal just outside the camera's view. Right, right. They, they, um, yeah, that's behaving, you know, sort of like you see a police car out on the road, then you slow down. Mm -hmm. Just to to be clear here, Temple, like I'm I'm not I'm, I'm vegan, but I'm not seeing you as the enemy. I see you as a friend for animals. Um, but I, do you understand my point about um, acknowledging the the problem of what actually is reality for animals? Because I find it I find it really hard to to not say that the majority of farmed animals. We're talking about chickens and farmed fish. Like these animals are living miserable lives, and I think we have to acknowledge that if we're going to do something about it. I have to work in the industry. Mm -hmm. No politics. Okay, I understand that. I, I have to work in the industry. I think there's a lot of stuff that has to be improved. Mm. Very definitely. Yeah. And the thing is, I want to talk about how do we fix it yes. rather than just saying how terrible everything's terrible. Yeah. We need I'd to rather. Fix it. How do we fix it? Mm. Well, you know, my um, I started out thinking I could fix everything with engineering. Mm -hmm. I found I can fix about half the problems with engineering. Mm -hmm. Other half is management. Mm -hmm. Find out what's actually going on out in the field. And we yes. have two fabulous vaccines because a vice president lady scientist at Pfizer mm -hmm. saw rows of refrigerated trucks that we normally haul food in mm -hmm. used as a morgue. Yes. That's seeing reality. Yeah. And Pfizer opened the bank vault to develop that vaccine. Yes, that's, that's an inspiring story. And it, and it suggests that people need to see what's actually happening out there so that we can gain well, the motivation to do something about it. And this lady has a dog mm -hmm. and they were walking it. Mm. And that's when they saw the trailers. Yeah, it's a, and it's I, a... I start to get choked up now when I'm talking about that. No, I, I understand. Well, I am getting choked up. Well, I've got one shot right now, the Pfizer vaccine, and the right person got out of the office and saw something really bad. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have this vaccine, which but, uses the, 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 the RNA technology, been around for a long time, but it had just stayed in the lab. Mm -hmm. well, and they made it real. Temple, it's really uh, beautiful. To and see. that, that I, when I saw her interviewed on 60 Minutes, I was crying. It's worth noting that in this conversation with Temple, I was really trying not to turn it into a debate. She's very much an insider in the meat industry now, and I do feel like she's an apologist, and I do feel like some of the the videos that she's put out there with the meat industry are misleading the public into thinking that their meat are coming from more ethical sources than they actually are. But I think it's worth noting that while I think the meat industry have this desire to change the public perception so that they eat more meat and make more money, I don't believe that this is Temple's motivation when she's making these videos. I believe that she genuinely wants to reduce animal suffering and show how it can be done in a way that causes less suffering to animals so they're less miserable. I don't think she's trying to mislead the public so that people buy more meat. I genuinely think she's coming from a good place with this. But in a way, I think you could argue that the meat industry are using her to try and propagate the humane myth. But I think it's important to remember that when I asked Temple Grandin about her motivations for her career in relation to animals, she cites reducing animal suffering as the spark that's encouraged her to start doing any of this. And at times I do find myself getting frustrated that she wouldn't acknowledge that the vast majority of farmed animals are living miserable lives. I mean, it's that's the way it is. And she won't deny that that's the case, but she won't come out and say it. And from my perspective, I, I feel like that's a disservice to the animals. I think we have to acknowledge the reality of what's actually happening. Otherwise, we're going to mislead the public into thinking that their animal products are coming from ethical sources when they're coming from terrible places. But I do try and see it from her perspective where she's working within the meat industry and she feels like she has to have a good relationship with people in meat companies so that they can allow her to, to create incremental changes. And of course, when we do talk about specific standard practices in the meat industry like gestation crates like keeping hens in cages she's quick to condemn these specific things it's just when we take a more broad broad perspective she doesn't want to be seen as someone who's going against the meat industry i suppose i understand that temple is going to be a controversial figure 
in the vegan community and that's completely understandable. But you know, I made a post about Temple Grandin on my Instagram the other day and there was so much hostility towards her. There were people saying that she's evil. There were people saying that she literally has no empathy for any animals whatsoever. There's just no empathy there. And after talking to her, it's clear to me that that just isn't the case. She does empathize with animals. Like I said, she cites animal suffering as the motivation for why she started in the first place. And she wouldn't speak out against practices like gestation crates if she didn't think that these things were bad for animals. I mean, she literally is trying to make things better for animals. She's trying to make them suffer less. And look, I disagree with her about the prospects of a humane animal farming system. And, and I'm disappointed that she won't condemn the meat industry more broadly. But to say that she has, hasn't got any empathy for animals is just blatantly not true. She is an empathetic person. Just look at the way she was talking about COVID-19 and how moved she was by that story of someone seeing something that they don't like and then trying to make things better. She really wants, I really believe she wants to make the world a better place. And look, we have to remember that Temple is a woman in her 70s who spent her entire life working in the meat industry. She's part of this community. The people around her are all part of this community. And I think we have to take into consideration where the person is at when we're talking to them. I don't think it's productive to just talk to every human being exactly the same and not alter your message depending on who you're talking to and what their current beliefs are. And while I disagree with Temple Grandin on lots of things and there are some things she's done that I think would cause harm, overall, I respect Temple for putting the well-being of animals on the map. And she's an inspiration to so many people for what she's achieved and the barriers she's overcome throughout her life. Anyway, in a lot of ways, I found it quite a, a difficult discussion to navigate. Uh, I hope that you found some value in it. You know, I have some very interesting guests coming up on this podcast, so, so do subscribe if you want to see those. And that's probably enough of me rambling about this conversation, but I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with another video.